Hi there. My name is Deepak Ramola and I love people and have been asking them for a long time what is their life lesson. This series is all about passing on their learnings and sharing that wisdom with you. Years ago, after having won both a Pulitzer and a Nobel Prize for Literature, the magnificent novelist Toni Morrison was asked by a journalist, "So when will you start to incorporate white lives in your books in a more substantial way?" Morrison called it an illegitimate question and spoke with unwavering commitment to calling out racism. Like Morrison, many other people whose voices have been oppressed have been heard and speak up but it is not very common to hear the voice of the other side the oppressor so it was a refreshing change when chad e right shared his story and acknowledged that as a product of a small coal town in rural pennsylvania growing up he was conditioned for 18 impressionable years into thinking of minorities as a threat to their community He said derogatory terms were thrown around too often to remember and that abuse was followed up with suggestions of violence if their property was to be infiltrated by the minorities and so over time this behavior became predictable and acceptable and standardized in the same way that parents teach their children to say thank you and sorry And so he said the conditioning was intentional and deliberate. He was ashamed to admit that he sat amidst wildly offensive humor and jokes that were being cracked about the minorities. And that even though he didn't subscribe to their idea, he stayed quiet and was part of that collective spruing so much hate because he thought that he was making a deposit into his white standing. and that it would pay off as an interest in terms of people's perception of him years later and if he spoke about or against the hatred that he would be depleted of his account in a split second and even though he didn't believe it he still participated and nodded and laughed sheepishly on those comments after 18 years of communal ignorance when chad was moving to pittsburgh his father pulled him aside and offered a piece of advice his father spoke of his father who was a captain in the army during the world war 2 he spoke about the young cavalry of men who were minority but served valiantly under his leadership he spoke about their respect their honor their dedication their commitment which was very very inspiring and so In that moment the lesson offered to Chad was ignorance breeds ignorance enlightened breed enlightenment and you must own your perspective not only did he gain some insight but also some valuable courage after doing some serious research on systematic racism he was able to sort out more forums that spoke about equity inclusion and anti racism But what he noticed was in most of these gatherings white male men were absent it was primarily white women or minorities that were speaking up now as a 41 year old father of five including three biracial boys he says he's found his purpose on the issues of anti racism and it is to encourage his privileged community to sacrifice their comforts to support the end of racism i was happy to hear that but i think darius simons an african american male growing in a predominantly white country who has been questioned by police has been stopped and stereotyped would appreciate that more or star wessler another young woman would pay attention to that story and be happy to hear about it because as a black woman as a black person she says getting up every day you need strength when people all around you just wish for ill upon you 
She says life in these circumstances has taught her that strength is not only measured up in muscles. Strength is also getting up every day no matter what happened yesterday or what will happen tomorrow. That is strength too. Overcoming racial discrimination and social injustice isn't just a black and white problem. It's a human problem. The lens of these stories are mere examples on what happens across the world, whether it's in a developing country like India or a developed one in Europe. You see, we all must stop to ask ourselves what conditioning has biased us towards someone else? What prejudice do we hold that isn't helpful to anyone? As Toni Morrison advised, the serious or the mere function of racism is distraction. It keeps you away from doing your work. So you go over and over explaining yourself to people the reason of your being or that you exist. Somebody says you don't have a language and you go spend 20 years convincing them that you do. We have work to do people. Let's get to it. Starting today, I hope we're able to put an end to racism of all sorts and that fuels our day. there i hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did i'm happy to tell you there's more coming you can send us your life lesson and be featured on this series visit us at projectfuel.in and share your life lesson let's learn from each other